What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Spice of Christ in Your Life. And today I wasn't even going to do an episode, but something happened to me. And I got to share what happened to me because I know a lot of you are still going through it. And this is something that hasn't happened to me in a long time. Um, I bought a guitar on OfferUp. You know what OfferUp is? It's an app where you could sell stuff. New, used, whatever. And this guy sold me a guitar. It was smaller than what he had advertised on his picture. It was a junior size acoustic guitar. And it was in good condition. I didn't see the back of it, so I still don't know up to now, and I really don't care. I bought it. He gave me some other instrument equipments pretty cheap, you know. So it was worth what I paid, way worth what I paid for, because it was basically not even close to what they're valued at. You know, very cheap I got it for. And um, I put this guitar on a chair outside, you know, in my driveway. So I'm there messing with the car, in and out, going in and out. Next thing I know it, I'm by the side of my car, and as I'm going to go get the guitar, it falls down. No wind, no nothing. Falls down, boom. Scrapes real slowly. So I get it, and I start examining it like the old me used to do. And I see this ugly scrape in the back of the guitar, but remember, I didn't know if it had it or not. But that's the thing. I'm going to how I used to be. And I look at it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened? There's no wind, there's nothing. I started getting a little upset and I when I told my wife what happened and she's all like what and I go yeah I go there's no wind or nothing it's scraped ruggedly in the back I don't even think it had it before I don't even remember seeing it having that and I'm there thinking that I even examined the bag and I'm like no I didn't examine the whole guitar in the back I was more concentrated on the front because you look at the front of the guitar not really the back so I was upset and I was getting mad so I came upstairs and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to sell it because the goal was to sell it anyway because it wasn't the size I needed. But I wanted to sell it out of anger now. I didn't want to sell it because I wanted to sell it. I just wanted to get rid of it ASAP as fast as I could. And I started saying, you know what, what am I doing? This is a material thing. Jesus lets us know that we need to store our treasures in heaven where moth and thieves cannot get, you know, or rust. I'm going to share some Bible verses and I got an iPhone that God blessed me with. So I'm going to share some Bible verses and, you know, and this, this is a funny thing. I'm one of those guys that and I'm pretty sure a lot of you are still going through it as well. well. I'm not going through it till right now, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you are still going through it. Um, I like to keep my things very prestige, very brand new looking, as you could say, like if it's never been used. Um if I bought something and it would scratch right away, I'd want to sell it or I'd give it away to somebody free out of anger, not caring what it what it was worth or anything. Yesterday, I got this iPhone very cheap and it's, um, you know, I got some phones for my family. And as I got in the cart, it slipped out of my pocket. Boom. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I got it. I looked at it, examined it, and I'm like, yeah, it really didn't bother me. Boom. Falls again later. I was a type of person back then. It didn't bother me when it fell again. But back then, I was a type of person that if that phone would have fallen, I would have done more than just examine it. I would have checked if there was scratches. I would have checked if it was functioning properly. I would have checked, you know, if there was a crack. I would have I would have gotten a magnifying glass. That's how bad I was, you know. And thank God that he's worked, you know, he works with us. Thank God he's worked with me and he continues to work with me. Because he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And I was bad. I was bad. I was real like items I would sell. People would be like, whoa, did you, is it brand new? Well, yeah, I've never used it, you know. And they're like, wow, you know, like everything I would sell, it was brand new. And as you can see back there, I still got to get rid of a lot of stuff. I got rid of the curtains. But those right there is in package. That's in package. That's still in package. So a lot of my stuff's still in package. But that stuff I'm going to get rid of or stuff I'm going to burn. Um, it doesn't phase me anymore. That's how it was. Everything had to be nice and neat when I buy it. The car that God blessed me with, the same thing. It was in good condition. And I was going to get another vehicle before. And I was warned by the Holy Spirit to test drive it because I was very impatient. And it's all about patience. And because of the patience I had, I was able to get a beautiful car, you know, a Charger. And the miles were very decent. And the body was like if it just came out of the dealership. And before the Charger, there was a vehicle I wanted to get. Because I was getting tired of holding the money. Because I could have money and 
I just don't waste it on anything either. If I waste it, it was back then on just collectibles, just to have there, like idols. And thank God I've gotten rid of a lot of my stuff, burned stuff, you know. And um, what I did was I looked at the, the, the dude that was posting the vehicle. I looked at the vehicle and it looked decent. And I go, I'm not gonna touch it, I'm just gonna buy it. So I told the guy, you know what, more likely I'm gonna get it off you. I just, I need a vehicle. We go and all that. And I was desperate for a vehicle. We get there and the guys are like, okay. So, you know, he was ready, you know, just for me to hand him the cash. The thing is, when you're growing in the word, the Holy Spirit warns us. And he told me, test drive the vehicle. I was like, what? Like, you know, like what? Like, test drive the vehicle. So I look at the guy and I go, can I test drive your vehicle? And his whole face expression changed. Uh, yeah. I get the keys. I go start driving. Everything's going good start turning <laughs> red flag it's leaking steering wheel fluid i go back i tell him i go it's leaking steering wheel fluid well yeah you know um he wasn't gonna tell me it was more to just leaking steering wheel fluid that vehicle had rust in the inside and little screw areas so that was another sign of something you know major that happened to this vehicle so it had rust in the inside on the metal parts um I gave the, the guy some cash just for meeting me, even though he was closer, it didn't matter. And then he ends up telling me out of anger, I guess, because I gave him the cash for gas that he wasted. He goes, well, I could have put in steering wheel fluid and you wouldn't have known. Well, you know what? Being a son of God, I would have known. And I'm telling y'all that when he told me that, I just ignored him because I know he was saying it out of anger. I'm telling you that. I know a lot, of, a lot of you brothers and sisters in Christ have gone through certain things and the Holy Spirit warns us. You know, God's always with us. I waited. My charger came along. I didn't think I was going to get it. It was posted like for so long, like that day. When I posted, it was towards the night. I told the guy what the lowest he'd go. He dropped it down like 500, 700 bucks. I told him I'd meet, I'd meet him tomorrow if it's not sold, you know. I told him something like that. I end up going and I'm telling my wife, there's no way it's going to be there. We get there, it's there. People started showing up, calling for it. And I didn't get there early either. Got that vehicle. Um, it was like if it came out of the car lot. Beautiful vehicle. And then it was to the point where I didn't want no one scratching it. I didn't want no one, you know, making a mess in it. My wife had accidentally done like two scrapes on the side of the door when she would put our little boy in, upset at me. Like I said, I was the type that would get angry and hold like an anger. I wouldn't yell at her or do anything else. I'd just hold an anger. Like, wow, how could she do this? Well, you know, she could have prevented it. You know, stuff like that. The more I started growing in the word of God, you know, the more I started caring less about my vehicle, about a lot of things that I would um, idolize, you could say. Well, one day I uh, take my vehicle to show my dad my prized possession. As I'm going and I'm showing him, somebody keyed the hood. And instead of getting angry, I started thinking that it maybe it was the neighbor, maybe it was somebody, you know, from the street. But I was just thinking it wasn't more anger, it was more like, who would do this, you know? And then from there, it was more like, you know, I don't even care. I don't. My dad was shocked that it was scratched. Well, you know, he's in the world and all that. Other people too, like, oh, who did this to you? That's messed up. The more I started seeing, I was like, I really don't, I really don't care, you know? It's like I say, if it's, if it's broken, throw it away. If it's repairable, repair it. If it's working, then just leave it alone. Uh, the hood of the car, doesn't matter it's just a scratch it, the car's still working if it wasn't working well, well you know be i mean pay, i'll pay to fix it whatever it's not fixable then just let it go now now that i see it like that uh, but it was just the hood of the car it wasn't like the engine or anything and everything started changing i started realizing you know like yeah it's true you know this is all just material things jesus already warns us he tells us everything he tells us is truth we shouldn't be worrying about it we shouldn't be doubting but we doubt we worry and we question and Jesus is truth that's why he tells us that's why he warns us and then when you start realizing you're like wow I should have just listened to Jesus yeah 
you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the way I see it now. And when I got attacked earlier, because I say attack because I haven't had this happen to me in so long. It upset me. It upset me, but not to the point like I used to be, you know. I would have probably broken the guitar out of anger or whatever. And I say, you know, I got to do a video about this because I know a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ are, are going through this. And a lot of times when one brother gets attacked in an old category, more likely a lot of brothers and sisters are starting to get attacked in old categories. So stay strong, you know. Always have your faith and, found and foundation on Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus tells us all this for a reason, he, you know, because he knows he's the almighty. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, three in one. And he tells us this. He doesn't tell us this to make us, you know, um, question. He tells us because he knows. He knows it's, it, we're here temporary and we're gone the next. That's why he tells us in his word. You know, we're just a vapor in the wind. And that that's how it is. We're just here temporary. If I pass away, like I told my kids, well, my oldest, because my little one's still little, all the rest of the stuff I still have that I haven't gotten rid of, sell it, get rid of it. Just don't, don't have it, you know? Because I'm telling you, I have a lot of stuff, but thank God I've gotten rid of so much. You know, God's blessed me with a studio light. He's blessed me with a phone. He's blessed me with my mic. He's blessed me with a lot of stuff. Um, I've gotten in so much studio equipment, the guitar, the drum. You know, that guy gave me a good deal on a lot of stuff. And now that I see the guitar, it's like, you know, maybe it just wasn't for me to let go. I'm going to give it to my oldest. He just like he learned to play the drums. I know he'll learn to play the guitar. But we're nobody to question God. His word is his word and his words already there in the Bible. You know, Jesus tells us all this not to to hurt us. He's just telling us the truth. You know, everything's temporary. And if it hurts you, it's because you don't have a relationship with Christ. That's why. Because you're still uh, focused on the material things of this world. And that's how Jesus opened my eyes. That's why I'm doing this video. Like I said, I wasn't planning on doing a video yet. Uh, we finished. Uh, I finished the interview with Reed. Um, you know, everything goes good. We'll post it soon. I don't know if he posted on his. But Jesus continues to open my eyes. And it's like his word says, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father except through me. And it opened my eyes to see the materialistic things of this world are just materialistic things. That's all it is. You know, we're here one day and we're gone the next or we're gone the same day. And I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy I'm getting to tell you all this, what I went through today because it happened today. And... You know how Jesus just came and he tells me, what are you worrying about? Do you not listen to my word? Do you not understand? Like, come on, son, open your eyes. Like, heaven awaits you. You'll have anything you want up there in heaven. Anything. You'll be able to do anything you want. You want to walk on water like me? You'll walk on water. You know, he offers us so much up there. And it's like before when I would before I would go to bed, I would talk about the, my mansion to to Jesus and how I want it and I want a music room. Well, I'm gonna have a guitar that's never gonna rust, never gonna break. I could drop it as many times as I want. It's never gonna break. It's never gonna dent. That's what we gotta focus on, like Jesus tells us. And it's like he says, I tell you the truth. You know, he, he kept saying it to the people over and over. I tell you the truth. Yes, because Jesus is truth. But we have to 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 be founded on him to understand him. See, if you're still in the world, like I'm saying about the materialistic things, you know, that's what's keeping you away from seeing the the glory of Jesus Christ, from from understanding what he you know what he wants for us. And that's why he says, store you know, store your treasures up in heaven, you know. And I keep saying, you know, I don't know. I keep saying it. I'm just like I'm just happy right now. I'm just so happy right now. And I really don't like to edit my videos, and that's why I do videos where I correct myself. So sorry if I end up saying something that sounds like I'm off or something. Just let me know, but that's why I correct myself a lot. And, um, you know, Jesus loves us. He's life. He's truth. He's peace. He's everything we need in this world, you know, that we're still here in this world. 
And when we go to the next, we're going to see all his glory, his beauty, everything. So once again, brothers and sisters, take care wherever you're at. Have a good day, a good night, and God bless. If you need any prayers or if you want to comment, if you want to talk, you know, I'm here. I can't, I wouldn't be able to do this without Jesus Christ. If you see a lot of my videos, I was so far from him. And now he, he has me so close to him because when I took the step to accept him as my Lord and Savior, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. All you got to do is cry out to him. And we, we're always going to go through our battles, but they get easier along the way. Because your your faith becomes more stronger. Your foundation in Christ is, is already being set. And once you're set, you know, the enemy's not going to be able to move you. Because you already know it's the enemy. And you already know Jesus is going to come to save you. So take care and God bless. Keep up the good fight. Be a soldier of Christ. And remember, if you don't have the Christ of spice in your life... You're going to get it here on this channel.